Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome to this brand new playthrough in City Skylines. Now with the announcement and some of the early information coming out for City Skylines 2, it's gotten me quite excited to play the game again. Now I've clocked about 100 hours of City Skylines before, but over many years, and I actually never really used mods, and I've only tried a handful of the DLC. So, I think now is the perfect time to jump in at the deep end to see all that the game has to offer before we get to the sequel. So for this playthrough, I'm using about 30 mods, most of which are for graphical enhancements and the fine-tuning for placement of buildings and roads, but there's also a few bigger gameplay mods, most notably Realistic Population, which tries to get a closer simulation to real life. So no longer are you going to have these towering office blocks with just 8 people in them or single houses that have 10 families, but instead, they'll more accurately represent the capacity that we'd assume them to have. Now this changes the game dramatically as you'll need way more houses than before. But I've tested it out for a little while now, and I think it's gonna make the playthrough extra immersive, which is what I'm all about. You can, of course, find the full list of mods in the description below, and if any get added to the series over time, then I'll just update the description as I go and let you know at the beginning of the episode. Now, this is gonna be a beginner-friendly series, even though the game's a little older. I think that's just helpful bringing everyone back up to the same page so they can all follow along. I'll also be talking through everything I'm doing all the time, and in the first few episodes, things will be just a little bit slower and a bit more basic before I can really build up the economy and get more creative and unlock services. So. If things seem a little bit plain at the beginning, please do bear with me, because if you watched my other series, you'll know episode 1 looks like this, and episode 50 can look like this. So I'll be growing, improving, and getting more creative with time, especially if the series does well so I can devote more time to it. So make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave as many suggestions as possible, because with other Builder games, the community's response has helped me to improve and also teach that back to others as well. Alright, without any further delay, let's begin. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the founding site for the City of Swords. Now before we get into the actual game mechanics, the UI, the mods and such, I thought we should at least get start building first, and while we're waiting for the first few residents to move on in, then we can kind of talk through the more granular aspects of the game. But before we do, the most important thing to note is that we have $70,000 in the bank, and we're going to be working towards the first initial milestone, which is building ourselves a little hamlet. So we need a population of 550, and the important thing that this is going to unlock for us, it's not education, it's not healthcare, it's loans and tax control. So that's what we need in order to be not soft locked, so that we can actually earn money, or at least spend a bit more to build more things to get ourselves profitable so we can keep growing. Otherwise, you could end up running out if you spend badly and you can't get enough people to move in. So we're going to be trying to avoid that. Now, if we have a look at the terrain shape and things like this, we're early on enough in the game that we actually can't check for natural resources or anything else. So I'm going to be building around this little river here and in between this lake. I think this would be a nice area for the initial starting town. And then maybe as time goes on, we'll expand further out that way. But who knows? We can do whatever we want. We can go out to the bay and build a nice harbor. Let me know what you'd like to see. All right, so to start us off, we have our double little highway coming in here that just loops around in on itself. Um, so we're going to kind of branch off of that. Now, to start, I think an easy thing to do would be just to use the roundabout mod to allow us to go into free cursor mode and just place a roundabout wherever we want. So nice and easy roundabout. I don't have to be too finicky with it. We'll build one that's a decent size right about here, and then we'll kind of build our town off of this. I just realized that tree didn't get deleted. I think it will eventually. I think the roundabout tool kind of ignores trees sometimes. But anyway, we'll clear all that stuff up later. All right, so importantly, we need to hook this up to the actual uh, highway. So we'll just like this. If we just build our first road, so you'll notice that this isn't going to like being connected here. So straight away, we're going to use Anarchy, and that will allow us to connect rather nicely. And building that first road, you may have noticed the frame rate just hitched a little bit. And that's because it's unlocking some of the first few tools that we can actually use to get started. So we'll just build it like that. We'll build another one then, maybe uh, just another single road that goes this way. Yeah, just connect it to the node for now. Right, and I'll clear this up and make it look a little bit nicer just in a moment. All right, so now that we've actually got a medium road, I think what would be nice to go is use sort of freeform roads... Make sure that we don't need anarchy on at the moment. Toggle road bending, just leave all that off. We're on a normal mode for now. Hide this menu and let's get started. So I'm going to build along the sort of natural terrain features that are painted on the ground, the kind of changing color of the ground texture. And that way we have a nice sort of mini cliff that we can work with. 
Uh, let's actually just go as far as that. We don't need to go any further. I'm, I'm worried about spending too much money. So what we'll do now is we'll branch off of this and begin our actual town. So we'll kind of come in maybe here. We'll curl up this way. Looks good. Curl around. Nice. We could even go lock it further. Do we have this on? We do, actually. Hmm. It's not locking into place for some reason. Or auto-snapping. It doesn't really matter. I think it's because I did freeform, but I'm not too sure. Okay. Let's just leave it like that for a moment. So that's what we have. Fairly organic looking to start. Um, so... How much money do we have? 55,000. All right, so we'll start building out a little mini village, and then we're going to need an industrial area. I think maybe the industrial area can actually keep going. We'll put it a bit further at the back. Yeah, actually, we'll snake up this way, and then we'll just build a dead straight road coming kind of off of that for our industrial area, so maybe just down here. Yeah, weird. I'm not getting any snapping at all. Is that because of this? It is on normal, so I'm a bit confused by that, but it's not snapping like at all. Anyway, so that's an even right angle. It's a 90 degree angle, so that's fine. Just keep going with that. And that's where our industry will be. So we'll put our power plant down there. All right, let's go back to freeform building. And let's just try to build a sort of organic looking city <laughs> or a little village. So we'll come in with maybe a straight road here at least. Oh, control gives me the snapping actually. Okay, there we go. Nice. Yeah, those trees aren't being deleted. It's kind of strange. I'll have to, I guess, manually delete them. There must be some mod thing that I've left on that isn't getting rid of it. So I do have prop anarchy on, but tree anarchy is off. And that normally means that these would get deleted, I thought. But, oh well, whatever. I could just manually remove them. Shouldn't have to do that. I've obviously made a mistake, but I'm too far in now to quit. Um, so, let's try to make this a bit more creative. So we're going to come in from our main road here, come off to the side... This is where we'll have our little hamlet or whatever. So maybe we'll come up, go into a little cul-de-sac or something. Just even just like that. And then we'll split off of maybe this one. Yeah, about to there is pretty good. Lock it in. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So that leaves us a bit of a gap in the middle. But we can always fine-tune things, fine-tune these things, or leave it for services or something in the future. Um, so the only way for these guys to get out is to come down here. So we can branch this across now, maybe. Yeah, let's bring this in just the way we just did. I'm just, I'm just going by the seat of my pants here. By the way, <laughs> I have no plan. <laughs> um, but something like this, I think, would be kind of nice. Now, if we could get a better angle on this, it'd be good. So we could actually try using a mod here. There's actually a curve tool that we can use. Create a loop. So we'll go from here to there. That's not what I wanted to do. Create a curve. That's better. Doesn't seem to want to do that. Hmm. And that's obviously just the wrong way. So click on the node to change the direction. That's not doing it. There we go. And there. We're getting kind of closer. It's sort of the idea. I tell you what, if we just bring this forward a bit. So we know there. And then we can probably connect the two relatively easily. There we go. That's what I wanted. Easy peasy. All right, we'll just go back to a default normal road. Bring this in as like a little estate again. And we could use it in the mod to adjust this to make it a bit more curvy. Uh, so you can actually do that to make the curve yeah, more natural. So I'll have to move this along. There we go. All right, cool. Now I'll explain these mods a bit more in detail in the future. I'm just trying to get stuff down right now. So we're down to 41,000. So I think that's enough of a area to work with. Now we got to work on our services, okay? So we'll start zoning all this to be residential, but first let's figure out how we're going to get these guys water. So we've got a little lake here. We have this little river. We're going to dump our sewage into the river and that river goes 
out and about into the bay, which I'm sure is totally fine. <laughs> um, but well, you know, we'll get water treatment and things like that in future. We'll, we'll make it eco-friendly. And then for now, we'll just pull water out of the lake. So there's two options that you have really at the beginning of the game for getting water. We have this building, which is going to be the water pumping station, 200, 240 upkeep per week. Uh, it has a little bit of noise pollution around it, so you don't want to build it too close to residential, I guess. But the other option is a water tower, which is sort of like infinite water. It also has noise pollution around it. Sorry, not infinite. I mean, you don't need a water source for it, but it actually pumps half as much as a water pumping station will do for the same amount of upkeep cost. So it's not really worth it. If you've got a lake, you should use it, obviously. Um, right, so we know that we're going to need pipes to go along this road. Let's see if we can make it kind of realistic and follow this road. I'll just connect into there. And then we'll follow maybe this road because it's nice and straight for a, a long while. Now you could just build it in its super grid. So sometimes I do that, but other times I like to see if I can follow the roads and try to make it somewhat realistic. Oh, it's not like in this because it's on a... There we go. 980. Let's not get too crazy. Let's just go to there. Alright, so we're also going to have to feed the industrial area. This is where coal power is going to go. So we'll just feed the pipe along if we can. And just come straight down. Alright, cool. So that's our pipes laid out. Now this pipes are, these pipes are going to have to continue out to somewhere here. So we'll put in the water drain pipe. It pumps out waste water. Remember to avoid pumping sewage upstream. That's fine. Don't worry about that. All right, we'll just hook that straight up. So you'll notice that these pipes actually have two pipes each. One is for uh, fresh water and one is for waste water, obviously. And they are handled separately, as you can see up here, water availability and sewage treatment. All right, so now that we've got 30,000 left, let's put down our power plant, which is going to be 19,000, so quite a lot. Just stick it down somewhere around here. And then we're going to need to hook this up for power. So power can travel to there, across, and to here. So it's going to be powering on our pump. All right, and we're powering on the sewage now as well. So we've only got 5,000 left. I've sort of played my hand now. We just have to hope that people move in. Have we connected up here? We actually haven't, so we've got to do that. So again, we'll just build a little road that comes off of the roundabout, I guess. That's not going to want to do that without some anarchy, I think. And it might be a little glitchy like it was last time, but it should be functional. See, I don't know if it is going to be functional or not, because it looks like that. But it should be okay, I think. Let's just... Can I undo that? I can. Okay. Let's try that again. Road bending... Node snapping needs to be on. Collision on. Yep. Alright, let's try it again. There we go. Better. Now, ultimately, what you'd really want to be doing is say, saying it's a one-way road. So we'll just hit this to tell to upgrade into a one-way road. Uh, here. Alright, so it's a one-way. And that's a one-way. It's going the wrong way, though. So we'll flip it. Alright, straightforward enough. Um, let's just maybe move this node. If we can. <laughs> And we'll bring this in. Just something like that. Uh, I'll clean all this up. But it's just so that when the cars are turning here, it's not too crazy. Alright, so let's get our first few people moving in. I think it's been long enough. Um, so we'll need power to kind of extend out of here. We've got power actually down here. So maybe we can put our first few houses down along this place. And once these ones fill up first, then we can just build more inside. All right, let's let time play. This is the first time Cedric Alexander is like, hooray, the water pumping station is being constructed. Hashtag fresh water. <laughs> what kind of hashtag is that? All right, uh, turn off anarchy. So you can tell the little tweet chirper is uh, he's on fire when you go anarchy mode. So we'll keep that off just so we don't go too crazy. And let's speed up time. All right, so now that we're waiting on people to move in, I can talk you through some of the mods that we have rolling uh, going on. So we're actually losing a little bit of money as well. That's going to be expected, but we do need to make sure that we're just hooked up to power somewhere, just somewhere to make sure it's okay. All right, so yeah, time is moving. I'm on triple speed, but 
we'll talk through some of the mods that we're actually us utilizing right now. Now, you can obviously look at the link in the description. You can see all the different mods that I'm using. But some of the gameplay altering ones that I think would be important to talk you through, uh, I wanted just to mention here at the beginning. So, I'm using something called Play It. And Play It allows us to adjust the speed of daytime and nighttime, respectively. So, day and night actually operate differently. You know, people are traveling to work a lot less during the night, a lot more during the day. It is actually simulated. And you can run different taxes. Uh, actually, speaking of taxes and budget. We need to tone down our energy budget and our water budget. It's all way too high right now. Our town is tiny. Just bring all that down. Um, but yeah, so like if you're running a bus service, for instance, you can have more buses during the day than you do at night, and you can actually see the volume of people for, like a day and night, and who's using the different transport and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. So I've made it go just for the because we're on YouTube here and people are viewing the episode. I just don't want the place to be shrouded in darkness all the time. As cool as and immersive as it can be. Uh, I've sped up nighttime two and a half times, and I've made di daytime last half as long, or um, if that makes sense. It's going half the speed, sorry, yeah. So you can actually see day and night down in the bottom left. This little globe here, the sun is actually like kind of circling it, and when it passes that halfway mark threshold, you can kind of gauge what time it is. It's about to be nighttime or whatever. And then the days are going by here. The numbers down here are weekly, so it's like weekly income that kind of thing. So most of the rates that you'll see when it comes to buildings are to do with the week, so seven days going by, and then the day and night time is just separated just to kind of give you a feeling of a simulation without having to wait for too long. All right, so let's, uh, they've all moved in. So that was good, that was all just fine. I just want to get further into the town now, organically. If I paint the whole thing immediately, some people might start living over here and they won't have power, so that's why I'm just going incrementally along this way. But once it starts to get going we really will sprawl quite quickly and there'll be no problem so we're going to put down some commerce out this way because this is where the noise pollution was so that can be our first line of shops out this way so one of the other mods is realistic population which i mentioned so we have one household here and who's going to be living in it in fact this says that nobody's living in it there we go two uneducated adults i know how it feels but people are moving in we should start getting our first set of taxes. Now, as these guys get more services and things like that around them, then um, they'll start paying for more taxes. So as we level up their little bars here, they basically pay more money. But it's a balancing act. You don't want everyone to be highly educated because then no one will take maybe more menial jobs or just uh, more labor intensive jobs, whatever might not require higher education. So you kind of have to have a balancing act. You purposefully don't want to put schools in certain districts and stuff to keep people stupid or just to keep people from seeking out the office jobs, I guess. All right, cool. So we have our population down the bottom, 89, 73 are coming in per week, so it's good. Our little bars down here are fluctuating. So to talk through the UI really quickly, we have the daytime, or sorry, the, uh, well, it is every day going by down here, the calendar. We obviously have our name of our city and then the info infographics about it. We then have the zoning demands. So people want more zoning for residential. Uh, some for commerce, nothing for industry just yet. Here's our balance, which has now gone into the negative, but that's okay. I kind of expected it would. We spent our 70,000. We're going to just slowly build it up now. Let's just keep zoning out. I think we can get a bit more aggressive with it now. There we go. Let's keep it on triple speed. Uh, what else? Temperature. It doesn't really matter for us. It's more for if you're playing on a winter map or if you're using other types of mods. Overall population, how many people are coming in, and that's basically all you need to know at the bottom bar for infographics. We then have up in the top left, we can switch to see the availability of electricity, water, happiness currently, uh, traffic flow, obviously, which is very important. We'll see the first few people now kind of coming in from the roundabout. Obviously, people are making it in here, so I've assumed that this area is working just fine, even though it looks kind of weird at the moment. But we'll tidy it up. promise you that we can see who's coming in. Let's follow this person. Going to the Elizabeth residence. Owner Kathleen Harris. She resides at the Elizabeth residence. So one thing that kind of bothers me... Oh, she works at the coal power plant. Get in there. Uh, one thing that slightly bothers me is that the house names are often called like the Hemlock residence, which is cool. But then if you look at the people who live inside, they'll have different names than Hemlock. Now, they'll the couple of adults will actually have shared the same family name. The names are correct. It's just that they don't match the name on the house, I guess. Which is always a little, little pet peeve of mine. But I thought I would just point that out in case anyone else notices it. Uh, all right, these have all basically filled in. So now we can get way more aggressive and just start really spamming out this. In fact, we can just use the fill tool now. I'll just let time play while we're doing it. 
Great. All right, and do this, 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 all of this area. And as this is our starter sort of city and slash village, you know, it's all kind of subject to change. But I like that it looks kind of natural, pretty organic. One thing that looks a little ridiculous is all these trees. Maybe I can start to remove those now. I don't know what I must have done to have that on. Because I did a little test game beforehand, and that didn't happen. So something must have changed. They're just visual anyway, so it's not a big deal, but it's a bit silly. They normally just get, you know, removed once you put a road down. I'm sure I'll figure it out right as this end episode ends. And I'll clear any rogue trees that I've forgotten to get out of the way. Alright, so, in talking about the mods, when I, what the reason I wanted to mention play it is because my, like I said, my day and night speed are decoupled now, right? They're playing at different speeds. The simulation is playing at the same speed either way, but the, the kind of sun is rising faster than it should, if you know what I mean, or the moon is out for shorter periods of time. The game speed is the simulation speed. So if you ramp that up, it's like going times 10, basically. I have it playing at point 0.5 at the moment. The reason for that is basically because I feel like this looks the most natural. So if you just keep it on number one speed, and we watch someone walk around, I can't actually see anybody right now, but if we see someone walking, uh, you'll just see they walk at a very normal pace. Whereas if you even had it at number, you know, 1.0 speed, the game's default, they kind of look like they're zooming around a bit. So I've tried to have this, like, more natural look and feel to the whole thing. Um, but we probably won't be on one speed very often. I'll probably mostly be on tri triple speed a lot of the time, while we're waiting for things to build, certainly, anyway. Money is getting a little bit better, even though it is still sinking into the negative. I've seen the balance come up a bit. Um, so the demand for jobs has risen. We have a big industry demand now, so we'll build out a little factory area up here. Just like that. Uh, maybe I'll just cut it off at the end a bit. Alright, so this is all going to be jobs and factories. So this feeds into the population thing I was talking about. A factory such as this one can have 28 workers. Uh, 40 jobs available in total. Sorry, 28 uneducated. 40 jobs in total. Huge! It should slam the demand way down in a few minutes. Uh, once it realizes like there are so many jobs versus people. Especially when you end up getting these big buildings. It is random. You could end up getting a small one. This one only has six jobs. 37, 35, 40. So we've just opened up a massive industrial estate, effectively. <laughs> um, which is going to be... Should really quell the industry demand massively. And then it should give much more rise to residential. So we'll see all these houses fill in shortly. So we'll just keep it on triple speed. Talk through a few other things. Is there anything else to mention with this? No, I don't think so. What about this one? That's just our graphics... Hmm. I think that's kind of it then for the main mods that you need to see. So while we're waiting on that, maybe we can see if we can touch up... Oh, I know what I can do, actually. Can we do marquee selection? We can. And we can say just trees. If I turn this off, just leave trees on. I've never had to do this, but do it now. Can't select those trees. So is it just... There we go. Yeah, so now we can just get rid of just the trees around the road. Clear that up because it was looking a bit silly. And it's much faster. Rip to the ones that were kind of on the edges there that are going with it, but it has to be done. But yeah, I'll test that afterwards and see what the hell did that. I'm guessing it's something to do with Road Anarchy or Network Anarchy, the mod that we use to uh, connect that roundabout. All right, just get rid of this last little bundle here, and we'll leave the rest for a while. How are we doing now? We're up to 295. Like I said, we're working towards 550. Then we can take a loan and pull ourselves out. We're profitable. That's the important thing. We just hit 300 total. Another thing is, all these names of houses and roads, they can all be named. And uh, I probably will name them from time to time and try to feed in names from the channel members or something. That'd be kind of cool, and that way you might recognize things. Uh, Rosie, my partner, actually mentioned that it'd be kind of cool to have like a subscriber town. So, or like a channel member town or whatever, and just people there, just in this one location. It never changes, and it's just the people that live there, and when they come out, we name them. That'd be kind of funny to keep track of it. I think it'd be kind of cool. How good is this? People are moving in, loving life. Very quiet car, that one. There we go. Cleaner at the box factory. Resides at the Mulberry residence. Stephanie Richardson. So we could go here and we could say, you know what? This is the Richardson residence. 
that would make more sense. <laughs> nice house. Gotta give it to her. Looks good. Alright, so how are we doing now? We still haven't unlocked any services. We've got 353. We're on triple speed. We've got a little bit more of a demand for commerce. The commerce buildings have started to grow. So this will be pe where people do their shopping. The local quickie mart and such. We have Yakisoba drugstore. Two drugstores. Quiet corner shop. Same with these, except they're built in slightly different areas. I think you can do a thing as well to change the assets if you didn't want like the exact same building appearing next to each other. But for now, it's all good. We're early on. We just want to get the town kind of roughly mapped out and have people move in. Our little estate's nice, and what we could do is build a little path in here, have a park in at the back or something. That'd be kind of nice. All right. Money's up to 430, looking good. If we just check, electricity is available, water is available, no problems there. All right, so while we're waiting on people just to move in, I don't think our zoning is filled up yet. No, there's still some spots. So while we're waiting on that, we can do some of the more fine tuning with this, see if I can get it right. So, we can use the move tool. Let's just uh, select everything again. And just select a single thing. So what we can do is select nodes to move things around, such as this. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't really do it until I get a different type of road, actually. Probably want to wait for that. Yeah, I think I'll probably just wait for that. But we'll bring this up a lot closer, and then we can just have it fork into two different little areas. But until I get some money, I can't build any more roads, so we'll just have to wait. Ah, something we can work on, though, is we don't necessarily need lights down here, so we can go to our junctions and just toggle those lights off. Can we do that? Wow, I can't do it for some reason. Why not? Oh, because the move tool is fixed. Sorry, that's why. Bonk. There we go. No need for that, but we'll put a stop sign on this road, so if people are filtering out onto the main road, they have to stop before, you know, to kind of give way. Um, another thing we can do is using the Traffic Manager President Edition is change the speed on some of these roads. So I would say 80 kilometers an hour on this main road. And if we hold shift and click, they'll just take over the entire thing, basically, all the way up into there. So that's 80, 80. So the roundabout's 40. This is 40. Is that good? I don't think you should be flying around a roundabout super fast. Maybe 60 would be okay. So you, you come off the highway at 100, and you slow down to 60. And then when you get back onto the main road, you're going 80, at least for now. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, because other things you can do with this, I want to keep 60 inside this main road, and we'll upgrade this one later on. This is going to be one of our main roads, and then this is all sort of residential. So even all the way up through the commerce area, I think 60 is fine. That should just help with traffic a little bit. The road gets segmented then every time you build a junction, so you have to make sure you keep updating it if you're not keeping track of it, for instance. It should be okay. We could do the same with one like this that kind of goes around, or build this one out further eventually, too. So another thing it can do is we can turn off parking. We don't want anyone to be parking on this road. Not that it matters too much, but you just shouldn't really be there. Oh, well, actually, this one's okay, because there is commerce areas here, so we could say not there, not there, but around the commerce area, yeah, you're fine. This is a road for transportation. It's a little weird messed up bit as well. I have to fix, figure out why all this little glitchiness has happened. I did a run beforehand and I was like, yeah, this is perfect. No issues. And now we've got trees all over our roads and little gaps in them. We're almost profitable though. We're getting close and we're at 461. So we're almost there. And how are we doing for demands? Yep, still some area for uh, regular residents to move in. We can paint this area too. Sunrise. Uh, other cool things you can do with this is if we go into our little UI controller button here, we can go to different nodes and move them specifically. So for instance, if we have a look here, there's crossings that lead nowhere. So it doesn't really make sense having them. So we can click an individual node and just say like, nah, you don't need that one. You don't need that one. This one, I guess, makes sense. There we go, we can finally see people. So if I go back to one speed again, we can see that they're walking fairly normally. Carol White. There she is. What does she do? Uneducated, the Lafayette residence. Ready to wear limited is where she works. 
the white residents. People don't like them just because they're the whites. The summit residents. Summit 1G. Look at this guy. Uneducated adult. Who cares when you rock in a car like that, though? Am I right? This guy's obviously a crypto bro. That car did not stop for the crossing, by the way, which is uh, not good. So other things you can do with this is you can like shift where the junction kind of starts and ends, which is really cool. I like that a lot. And we can choose when or not we want all these different crossings. So I think where we get further into the city here, it just doesn't look right having all these crossings to me anyway. So we just turn them all off. Because this is, I say city, really into the little residential area. Would they be having cro crossings in here? Probably not. At least in the places I grew up, like this, little estates and stuff, they would have basically no road markings. We could just turn those off. Nice. All right, cool. Looks a bit more natural, I think. So how are we doing now? 518, we're getting close. Getting really close. Still growing a little bit. Still people moving in. A little bit more demand for... I can't believe that there's demand for factories, really. Oh yeah, 28 out of 28. All the uneducated workers are taking all the jobs they can. But no one's in educated, really. We already have some well-educated, which is nice, even though we don't have a school or anything. But I guess you just get a little bit for free. Uh, yeah, sure. Just throw in a few more factories then if you think you can handle it. Just don't want to overdo it. At least not early on. Nice, look at the money now. We're making a thousand a week. We're finally profitable. Feels good, man. And we're just about to unlock our milestones, which allows us to get a, um, loans. But also, I think the first milestone gives you a cash injection when you get it. So let's see. We're just about to hit it. Boom, 550. Right, we've got our loans tax um, adjustments. Yeah, because you do have taxes before, but now we can adjust it. Garbage Disposal, healthcare, education, all these buildings then that came as part of that. Excellent. And there we go. We just got 20 grand. Yeah. I don't think it does that for the other milestones, but it did for this one. All right. It's time to place in the school and also figure out maybe where where the next road's going to go. City looks good from up here. Looks quite nice. Happy with the shape. And all this is residential, so not everyone's moved in yet. Yeah, so let's get some of these guys educated uh, soon enough. I guess we'll need the road first. So I'll tell you what, we'll build a road straight out from here. Something like that. Do we just want to go straight up to here? I don't see really why not, but... Yeah, maybe to there and just straight across then. Space already occupied. Oh, because it's this weird, messed up road. Yeah, I don't know what's happened there. Let's just disconnect that and reconnect it. Should be okay. Did I just do a one-way road as well? I want a two-way road. Alright, so that's connected again. And that's connected. And then we'll just upgrade this one to make sure this is correct. Alright. Unfortunately, these power lines are sort of in the way, but I wanted to build a school somewhere along this road. And how much money do we have now? Let's just get, oh, yeah, we have loads. Great. Awesome. Don't want this to actually connect to that side. We'll just stop it there. Right, when we clear those power poles, this area will look a lot better. Uh, what else now? So I'm just trying to look at the flow direction of like where everyone will be going. You know, you have to think in cul-de-sac terms. Like, oh, okay, people are going to be leaving to get to work. They have to go out this way, take a right, take a right, and then they're in the industry, or they work at the commerce right now. And in future, you know, they're going to be working over here and stuff. So just got to bear that all in mind that they don't have too far. They're not too deep in, I guess, to get out. Um, this one is kind of deep in, like if you were to take a left, people might be tempted to take these roads out and that could make things a little bit busy, perhaps. But ideally with a faster speed limit and maybe a wider road up here, they'll take this one. That's supposed to be our sort of main vessel out. In fact, we can do that now because we've just unlocked improved roads. So I think what we can do is already a four lane. Do we have that yet? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. 
Yeah, later we'll get a four-lane road that's small. That'll be perfect. Because a four-lane road is going to mean that if you got one lane here on the right, they can stop off at the commerce areas. But if no one's stopping at the commerce and they just want to get straight through, they use that middle lane, the fast lane, as it were, just to get straight out of here. All right, let's uh, put down a school. So I was thinking somewhere here, but maybe we could tuck it in a bit. But maybe not. Maybe even right here would be good. It's very central to a lot of places. And if we leave a little gap on the left, we could put a car park in there. So we'll dezone that area. And there's our school. Ah, oh, you know what? I probably should have went with the other looking one. If I undo that, do I get my money back? I do, actually. Okay, that's a good feature. That's a mod. <laughs> Let's do this one instead, the elementary school. I like this one better. Those guys who got their house back temporarily were super happy there for like a minute. Alright, it is built on this weird small little hill, but it'll flatten things out in, uh, a little bit later when we get the landscaping tools. Money's good. People are happy. Six students already. If we have a look at the education filter, we can see that there are 50 students eligible, and we have a capacity of 300 in the school. I didn't actually read anything about it, so effectively it was 10,000. The upkeep is 160 per week. They educate children. Placing one makes the neighborhood more attractive to the families uh, with children, and education is a requirement for buildings to level up. Only children can attend elementary school. So 240 water a week and electricity is 480. If we have a look at our electricity now that people have moved in. Starting to dip a bit. Remember we lowered it down in the budget. Water is still totally fine though, so no problems there. We can now look at pollution. And we can see what we're doing to this poor river as well. Just sending literally all the shit out of the town into this dried up lake bed, I guess, or river bed. That's going to eventually make its way all the way out to the ocean. But we're good for now. Flying car, a hoax. Thousands still waiting for a hashtag hoverboard. Hashtag back to the future. All right, let's zone the crap out of this place. People are going to want to live here, right next to the school. Kids can just walk to school. That road is... or the zoning there is a little messy, but whatever. Actually, I just realized we want to make use of this space, uh, space in here, so maybe just bring this up, curl it around that way. And we could bring this down and in. Now, let's have a look at electricity and see, can I get rid of some of these power lines now? I think I can. Yep. Alright, so that frees things up a little bit, and we also need to feed out our water a bit better. Uh, can we turn off the grid, maybe? There we go. Alright, they have their water. I like this look as well. It just, I don't know, something about it looks much more natural. I normally just build it in a massive grid. But following the actual roads has been kind of cool. I mean, it's not uh, as efficient because it's more expensive to do it this way, but... Alright, these guys have their water. All good. Nancy Morgan says, I think I felt something. Is it an earthquake? Run for the hill. Hashtag run for the hills. I love the use of hashtags here. Uh, Alright, we'll just zone it like crazy and then add some more of this uh, commerce. So commerce up here. Zone our lovely little new estates. Oh yeah, I was going to say, if people would like me to turn on the road names so that you actually see the names of the streets, I could do that. I just thought it looked a little weird. Because you see the name just floating in the middle of the road. I'd rather kind of keep it realistic if it was totally up to me. But it's not entirely up to me. Uh, let's check electricity again. Yeah, we can actually cut these as well, which is good. And that should free up our zoning here as well. Alright, we're already up to 722, the next milestone. By the way, we haven't done any garbage or anything like that just yet. We'll do it soon. Is Worthy Village 1,100. So we can get another loan, a bigger one, and expand our area and start setting districts and start working on proper industry. So that's when things will probably, properly, I should say, get up and running, I would, you know, because we'll have the full suite of tools that are available, at our availability. We'll have the fire station, police station, uh, some public services in terms of uh, transport, I think, even. 
and then landscaping tools. So then you've re you're really at the point where it's like you can play the game properly, I would say. Even though you don't have like 90% of like the stuff to come later, you have like all the categories, I guess, are unlocked by that point. All right, so should we help these guys out with some a doctor's office? So we have our school there. Maybe it would make sense to keep these things kind of close together. Although, that being said, I like usually putting, you know, services up around where the commercial areas are. So we'll put the doctor's office up here. Nice fast road so that the ambulances can get to wherever they need to go. So 10 grand for that. So people are going to be quite happy. So that's going to say the medical clinic is a small healthcare facility. Each patient takes up one bed at, uh, for some time. Make sure there's enough healthcare facilities in the city. And then, of course, if we select it, we can then choose what type of ambulance we want. I'll just keep it at the standard. The fly car ambulance can be cool, but that's more for the if you're near the uh, airport and things, I think. And then a large ambulance when you get to a big city. So for now, we just have this little, small little thing. What we can also use, if we have give ourselves a bit more time, is some paving options. So using a mod that lets us paint the surfaces, we can get rid of gaps like this. So for instance, I've selected paving, our brush size is just single, and then we can just pave it out. And then it looks like it's all kind of one area. Now we can get much more creative with this in future and I'll every now and then I think I'll do little mini time lapses during episodes where we kind of make things look a little bit better but like I said for this first episode really just wanted to get the ball rolling get people moving in you could spend I could have spent an hour on that roundabout at the beginning really if I wanted to let's go to 85% for the um, electricity budget and we can up update our road budget as well now the road maintenance one I'm not too sure exactly what it does in the tooltip it says like it increases efficiency so I think it helps the speeds Stay correct uh, as to what they're set at. Speaking of, how's our parking? Oh, yeah, where's the school? So the school is here. Yeah, people can park at the school. Is that, is that okay that they can park at the school? I like, suppose that's the idea, isn't it? We'll put a car park in there when we build up a few more people. And crossings need to be near here so that the kids know where to go. So maybe... Yeah, we can keep that as is as well, actually. In fact, because the school's here, we can maybe put these crossings back in. So they're all back. And we can even fine-tune them a little bit if we wanted to. Maybe put them a bit further in. You can do it all so it's e like equally distant from each other, which I guess is probably the smarter thing to do. And then even them out. This is what I was saying. Like you could, I could spend so long doing these things. Having the control to do that is so good. Um, another thing I've just been starting to play around with is the intersection marking tool. So if we select this area here, uh, without boring you too much, you can connect like a certain line to another line to create your own dotted line on the road. Now, you, you might be like, well, why would you want to do that? Well, really, it's for complicated intersections on a highway. But you can do other things here as well. So I actually made a preset called cl this one, Slow with Lane. So we can pop down here, I think. Not too sure how you actually put it down. Oh yeah, you just hit OK. Apply the preset. And yeah, that's it. So, apply. So what I've just done is I basically put a yellow line along the road, and then it says slow. So that yellow line I had initially I designed to say no one should park there on that side of the road. And then like people are being told to go slow, and then if we wanted to make them go slow, Tone it down when you're passing the school, yeah? There's children nearby. So it's pretty cool. You can actually type whatever you want. You can move it along here. You can have as many rows as you want. It's a really powerful tool. But just to be quick, I thought it was just kind of cool just to show it that way. Let's keep time moving. I'm really hoping to hit the next milestone before we wrap up. We've got 10,000. And pretty good need for still some industry and other things. So I guess we'll just pave all this out. So industry grows. These guys are going to be quite close to industry, which is going to cause them noise pollution and regular pollution as well. This pollution is just spilling over. I have a mod on that disables the visual effect from it, but the gameplay effect is still there. Uh, I just think it looks a little bit ridiculous, to be honest, the strong pollution effect. I think the smog that you get is awesome, but I just don't like the ground pollution. You get like, it looks like a radioactive wasteland, and the mod that removes it is called No More Radioactive Wasteland, basically. Um... So that's the one I've gone with, but unfortunately it turns off the fog as well. If I could only keep the fog on, I would love to. If you know a mod that just keeps the fog on and the gameplay and just removes the ground pollution, that'd be very helpful to me, but uh, let me know if you know of one. Uh, so I'm going to go with the marquee tool and again, just turn off everything except trees. 
see if we can just clear some of those trees out of the way. The other ones are getting removed when the buildings get built. It's just the roads didn't do it for some reason, and I think it's the network anarchy probably did that. So if we just have a look at our roads here, I think they're pretty clear for trees now. There's a couple down this way. Yeah, other than that, I think, you know, it's basically fine. We'll have a look through it afterwards anyway. All right, cool. A lot of people parking up here to go walk to work. And you can actually track all that. If you want to see where people are going, you click the traffic thing here. And then we could be like, okay, this road, you know, how many people are using it? So we can see pedestrians, cyclists, private vehicles, etc., etc., all coming in to use this area. And if we have a look at traffic overall, we can see that we're at 80% flow. It's a little bit busy here, as predicted, right? I did say that this road would be kind of busy as people filter out to get out of here. But they can also filter out to go out to the left, but we don't have anything out the left at the moment. There's no jobs or industry or anything like that. I'm eyeing up this area over here. There's actually, like, farmland. Uh, we don't have the resource thing yet, but you can check that before you kind of go with the map. There's farmland out here, and I think there's oil out at sea. So I think I'll probably expand out this way and then set up an agricultural industry job. So that way people can take the main road, get onto the highway, follow the bridge over, and then get to their job pretty quickly. So I think that should work well. But right now, things are pretty good, though. I mean, flow rate at 80% is totally fine. I think if you start dipping below 70, you're in trouble. But anywhere from 80 upwards, I think, is considered kind of good. But we're, we're teetering a little bit. All right. So how are we doing now? Big need for... Big demand for residential again. They've kind of all filled it up. So we'll just put some more out this way. Nice, we're at 1,000. So how many do we need? 1,100, right? Yeah. All right, see where we can squeeze these guys in. Maybe we'll shift this road down a bit. I'll just turn this all back on. Go with single. Move this down and out. Oh, there's lots of segments to this for some reason. Let's bring it out this way. I think we could bring it out even further. Nice, that's pretty pretty nice curve. Now I think what you can do is actually, in one of these tools, arrange at line mode, we can make this curve properly. Mathematically, I guess you could say. Yeah, there you go. Smooth. And we still have trees all over it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that. Sorry about that again. Looks good though. And we could actually, I guess, in theory, filter that all the way up to the industry area. So if they want to get out to the highway, which is what those, what the, the idea behind industry really is, is accessing the highway, they could do that. So let's continue this road out. So if we just use our picker tool, click that, we can just continue it out now. And that's going to look a little strange, but for now, we can leave it. Just let them connect. So they've got an outsider, con an outside connection now. Now, this is actually, it's hard to see, but the ground rises up here quite significantly. This is why I said I wanted to make nighttime go fast, because we just can't see. It's cool. I love looking at it, and we'll do more with it as the towns get bigger, especially. But it's just so dark. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, maybe fix this area up, because it looks a bit weird. A little wonky. There we go. Looks a little bit better. A little bit. Still kind of weird, but a little bit better. Now, it actually comes pre-made with a traffic light junction, which I don't think I need. There we go. But what you probably would want, I, I would assume, is maybe a stoplight. So let me see. This. Click junctions again. Stoplight there. So as people are coming out this way, they have to stop before they go. Give way to these guys. They're more important. I mean, that is just creating people stopping, but in theory, if trucks start going this way soon enough, it should be better. I guess until we see a problem, maybe we don't need a stop sign, yeah? <laughs> I 
Okay. I think we can uh, build out more residential just in here. So let's go back with our regular roads. Two-way roads. And... This one doesn't actually have a turn anywhere along it for a very long time. This is totally clear. So we don't want one there. But maybe up here. And how's that electricity doing? That's the power poles going all the way out there. Tell you what, we'll bring the power poles this way. Oh, actually, you don't need to do that. We can just connect them somewhere over here. All right, we can get rid of these ones now. All right, so we're fully connected up here, and then we just have the little power poles going out this way. So that's not too bad. All right, it's daytime again, so let's um, slow down time and build this area out so we can have a few more people live in the cracks here. Something you can actually do, which is kind of interesting, although I don't know if I'll do this right now, is you can remove the zoning here. Yeah, let's do that. So what we can do is, I guess, just click whatever road, upgrade, go to medium roads, turn off zones. So our zoning will go away. And we just upgrade this so that no one's living on either side of it. It means you can't attach anything to it, though. So do bear that in mind. But it gives us the freedom now to have a regular road that can come off of this area. Maybe we'll do a freeform road. And these are guys' houses are going to be the ones that go. But we need to turn back on zoning. There we go. It's all the way out to the edge, but just not connected to it. Now, these people are not going to like living so close to that road, I guess. Alright, we can smoothen this out a little bit, I think. bumpy anyway um so let's zone this and i would say just mass zone it all right so fresh new little estate down there and i'll nudge these roads a little bit probably in my own time just to kind of smoothen that out a bit because it looks a bit weird in fact actually why do i say that we could just use that tool again So not that one. I think here, 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 and there helps it a bit. There we go. All right, nice. Can make a little pathway or something that leads across. And let's just do a similar thing again down here. So the way these guys get out, you can go that way, or if you're living here, you can go out in that way, onto the main road, or out in that way, onto the main road. So they've got it pretty good, I think. They don't have it good if they want to get to school. The school is over here. Oh, we don't have garbage collection or anything. I'm such an idiot. Garbage and industry. Garbage day? Yeah, let's pop it somewhere right on the edge of town. And we'll use these small garbage trucks. So they'll start rolling out now in a moment. There we go, there's our first one. We'll follow this guy. The school is full of garbage. Alright, there we are. So yeah, in order for them to get to school, they would have to go up this way, or they would have to go out that way. Yeah, out this way and around, so we could actually check that. Yeah, see, this is where they kind of want to go. So school's there. They have to go up and around. Eh, I don't know if it's that bad, but... Because there's not that many people, you know. Remember, there's... Not everyone has kids in every house, so not everyone's going to school, but it's just something to bear in mind. I think people who are going to industry will probably take this road out that way. 
And then I'll just do what I did before, which is we can select some of these junctions, hide the markings, and that just kind of aesthetically cleans things up a bit, I think. Keeps our roads looking a little neater when they're in these kind of estates. Just don't think they'd be putting in crosswalks at every single turn. Um, yeah, so again, get some. Maybe we'll send the water pipe out this one. Alright, water is connected. And I think that's probably going to have to be it for this episode. We'll just speed up time. I'm getting really close. Maybe we could just keep that time moving. Get to 1 100. We're gaining 50 per week now. It, went, it fell a little bit earlier, but now it's coming back up. And the other thing is then we could have a bit more commerce. Still happy just to keep it up in this area, I think, for now. We've got no emergency services yet. We have our healthcare. Healthcare is all the way up here. If we have a look, three patients currently out of 100. Zero were treated last week. No one's sick. The town's perfect. Zero ambulances in use. You know what that means? Who needs healthcare? <laughs> Tone all these budgets down if they're not really needed yet. They don't need to have that number up. Alright, looking good. I think I'm pretty happy with the look of this little town here. In this little area. It's sort of similar to my test area. I was kind of building around this just to test it out. Test curved roads. And in future then, as we build out, we'll make another town expansion at this way and then maybe redo some of these things because early on, I'm just trying to get money flowing, but also not just build a giant grid. I want it to look kind of nice, but it is sort of like, yeah, this is our initial founding villages. These things are going to change. So as you can see, we hit Worthy Village, population 1100. We now have districts, policies, second loan, unique buildings, fire, police departments. We can build out the agriculture and we can expand where we're going to go, which I think is probably going to be out there. Alright, so I think that's enough done for today. That's going to have to be it for this episode. Remember, if you want to get future episodes early, you can be a channel member. Any tier of membership gets you videos early. And even if you're at the lowest tier, which I think is about $2 a month, basically gives me roughly equivalent to 1,000 views. So you can make your view go very far if you are a channel member. But don't worry, if not, no problem at all. But please do consider hitting that like button. The first episode in the series is really, really important for that algorithm, sending it out to more people, helping me to grow, and helping me to sustain doing series like this. And that's going to have to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you'd like to see in future for the Town of Swords, where you think it should expand to, what you would like to see. I'm genuinely interested and curious. And then we can kind of build around that. So like I said, I'll probably do agricultural sector out to the west. But other than that, I'm open to any ideas you may have. Also, in the style of play, would you like to see me slow down and focus on a road junction for longer? Or do you want me to go through the progression a bit quicker? Let me know. Again, though, that's going to have to be it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.